conceptual people talk about it all of the elements dropping in on you uh, forgive me if there's any ambient noises i am working at home today uh actually the last couple of days probably be back in the office on tomorrow but i wanted to take time to uh remind you guys that we are in the middle of an important fundraiser for the work we do in the community in general and especially for work we do with young black boys and young black girls uh, there's a major push for the Black Men Lead program because we're either going to be building strong black men by way of healthy young boys or we are going to spend a lot of energy and time trying to heal broken men as they continuously break things and others. Uh, I have been doing this work for some time on the heels and back of research that shows that socialization is the way to go. We are gaining ground and doing work and we are producing results, but we need to do it on a larger scale. We need to be more focused. And I can tell you uh, from experience, and it doesn't take a great deal of understanding to get this. You can have all the answers you want to have. You can have a wealth of knowledge, a wealth of understanding without resources. You can't get the work done. And a lot of children in, the, in, in, in that time frame slip through the cracks. And we end up dealing with them on the back end. And then we end up with the comments of, oh, my God, shaking my head and all the things. And the truth of the matter is, if we get them early enough, we can cut off a great deal of intimate partner violence, uh, black male on black male violence, incarceration High school dropout uh, rate would drop. Business ownership would increase. We know this because we've done the work. We've done the work for over 25 years in understanding it from a research perspective, from a uh, in, from the perspective of empirical data and being able to literally look at the numbers and see how it works. Every other group has a rite of passage program where manhood is universally identified so they understand what being a man in that particular enclave is. We don't even have a universal understanding of what black manhood is. Everybody's defining it based off of what they think their strengths are so they can push that. We need men who can perform in the areas that we need our men to perform in and that's the goal of Black Men Lead to teach them the principles of manhood. Uh, starting with a black man never brings harm to a black woman. Teaching them the importance of black business ownership. Teaching, teaching them the importance of responsibility and understanding how important their presence and role is in the home. And so much more. I am asking you to help us achieve our goal of this week, which is $10,000. The link to support our work is going to be in the description box. If you prefer to give via the Cash App uh, way, the organization's Cash App handle will be in the description box. For those of you who have followed me for any stretch of time, you know this isn't new. This is something that I'm passionate about. This is something that I have been uh, talking about and presenting and working on a substantial part of my adult lifehood one way or another and definitely in the last 20 years. So again, this is extremely important for our future. We can talk about black empowerment until we're blue in the face. If we don't have a male population that is productive and in place and doing what we need them to do, we're simply talking. It's time for us to take action. Again, I'm asking you to reach inside and support the work we're doing. Again, we're getting people referred to us on a daily basis. We need the ability to address the issues that they're dealing with, provide them with uh, wraparound services for the older guys, 
uh, and to implement on a national level a rite of passage initiative that universally identifies manhood so that we can start building men we can depend on consistently across the board regardless of where we're living and on that note i'm out of here uh the rest of the video is just a little idea of the work we do in the community uh, it's a little something to share with you again thank you have a good day i'm out something that's part of your intellect, it's part of your obtained knowledge. In other words, you talk with a different vernacular than white children. They came up in a different culture. 
how you talk and how they talk is totally different, but the test is based on how they talk. So guess what? They're going to score higher. But that's not an intelligence. That's not their intelligence. That's what they've learned. But that's what they use to always put out these studies to say that white students test 15 to 20 points higher on IQ tests on average. That's because y'all full of bull. When you put us down, we're highly creative. We figure, think of some of the things we figure out how to get in the hood with no money. We're very creative. We're very innovative. Think of, if you go back, just do a research. When you get off, do an internet research on all things invented and created by blacks. Find half the things that they take credit for, we did. We are not dumb. We're not stupid. We need to stop believing it. There was a guy who wrote a book called Brainwash named Tom Burrell. He spent 30 something years in the marketing and advertising world. He started his own company, Black Guy. And what he learned is how they're using propaganda channels. Another good book on propaganda is a book called Propaganda by Edward Bernays, who is actually the guy who created the campaign that got white women smoking. They weren't smoking before this campaign, but he told them it was cool, it was fly, it was sexy. And did that through the radio and the TV. That is how powerful this is. Half the things that people are doing that they think, this is what I love to do and want to do, no, that's what you've been told you love to do and want to do. If you don't know who you are, if you don't develop a positive self-image of who you are yourself, you will find yourself being led by what others believe about you or want you to believe about yourself. And so now we get back into that. So one way that you manage that is manage what you intake. The only way that you stop the propaganda machine, the only way that you stop it is to monitor what you allow to come into your gates, your eyes and your ears. If you allow anything to come in, anything has an impact. If, you, if everything you see is about uh, clapping, popping, whatever, whatever the latest term for shooting a gun is this week. Because mm -hmm. it's, you know, I remember it used to be wetting, it's been clapping, you know, popping a cap, banging, whatever it is that it is that tells you that's what we're supposed to be doing with each other, put that crap down because that's purposely been put there to get us to kill one another. Because see, every time a black man takes the life of another black man, that's two black men that they don't have to worry about. The one that's dead and the one that's in prison. And they have found a way to continue slavery in prison. This is how. When slavery ended in 1865, they, they uh, started a process of in, uh, incarcerating, putting in prison, black men at a high rate. And then they started a program called convict leasing. In other words, that's what businesses came to the state and say, I will pay you $50 per man per day for them to come out and work on my railroad, for them to come out and dig my ditch, for them to come out and do it. That's why you see those old movies, those dudes on there, they, 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 they're doing the uh, railroad. Mm -hmm. Those are prisoners that private companies paid for to come out there and do work. It's, it's, called, it's called convict leasing back then. Well, it kept on going. It went on through what was called Jim Crow laws. The Jim Crow laws were laws that were put in place to make sure that the black men who had all the skills, because they were the slaves, they built the houses, they plowed the fields, they did it. They were the ones with the skills, so they would be the ones that would have been hired for the jobs. But they put in laws to make that make it very difficult to hire blacks over whites. And that started Jim Crow. This also started when you saw the Ku Klux Klan come in, and they started lynching brothers because they were intimidated and scared, and so black men was an issue with them, and so every chance they get, they were lynching. Went through that process, and then we got to mass incarceration in the late 70s, early 80s. Well, they started again, but this time, instead of convict leasing, the businessman got even more uh, savvy. <laughs> business savvy. Mm -hmm. on. He said, I'm not just gonna hire, hire these cats from the prison, I'm gonna go out and build prisons, and then I'm gonna charge the state for them to house their prisoners. So now I'm getting paid to put, put them in the prison, then I'm using their labor for private businesses. So I'm profiting multiple ways off of this. And we only make up 13% of the population in this country. That means girls, boys, men, children, but our men make up 40% of the population in prison. We have the majority population. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time you know outside of the businesses that i run like myriad business solutions the visionetics institute odyssey media group i also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in houston dallas and other areas 
uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.